Hey everyone, it's great to be here. Thanks for having me today. Before I talk about our journey with Lighthouse Architecture, let me ask you a question. Imagine if you need to choose between the red pill and the blue pill. The red pill, the flexibility, freedom, and also scalability of the data lake, but you will be living in the world of messy data and difficult to standardize. The blue pill, the standard, accurate, reliability of the data warehouse, but you will have a complicated process of changes implementation. What if I told you there is no spoon? It's a false assumption that you need to choose between the two. There's another way, and today I would like to share with you our journey in finding the one. My name is Zulfika Lazuardi Maulana. I am lead data scientist in Grab Analytics team. My role is to enable data science and analytics platform for various team in Grab to make a data-driven decision that help in our mission to drive Southeast Asia forward. Today, I will share more about our journey on how we can achieve a sweet spot between the flexibility of data lake and the reliability of data warehouse using analytics like house at Grab. Let me share a little bit about Grab. Grab is a leading super app in Southeast Asia. We provide everyday services to millions of Southeast Asians across eight countries and 400 cities ranging from mobility services, deliveries, and also fintech. A total at least 20 products that provide an economic empowerment for our merchant partners and driver partners. We have more than 25 million monthly transaction users, over 9 million registered partners with more than 30 petabytes of data. And it will keep growing alongside with the complexity behind it. With great powers come great responsibility. Having this privilege of serving millions of Southeast Asia, we as a data team, data science, and also analytics team, strive our best to provide the best service possible by harnessing the power of data that are entrusted to us by our consumer and also our partners. Let me take you to the early days before we had a lighthouse. We use data lake. The key advantage of this architecture is flexibility. You can process various data types from different data sources to power analysis and data-driven decisions. It relies on low-cost storage options to store huge amount of data. Another good thing is data lake can support multiple use cases, but not all the use cases are optimal. Let's take a look at BI workloads. The data cannot be reused. Sometimes we need to create a repetitive query and also heavy queries to address various grain or different level of aggregations. For those reasons, we were trying to optimize our architecture by adding the data warehouse. The data warehouse has been proven to address what's lacking in data lake. They are great for BI use cases with consistent and also high quality data. But with the, with the data architecture of data warehouse as a standalone architecture, we are facing challenges in implementing changes because it might have a domino effect with other tables also. In our use case, we have finance-related data warehouse. And we also have analytics data warehouse for our business and product-related data. But again, the combination of these two types of data architecture become a data silos problem for our analytics team. The team needs to gather all different kinds of data from different places with different complexities. It's definitely a massive problem for us. So what is the solution? Remember, there is no spoon. It's a false dilemma. We can have base of both data lake and also data warehouse in the same place using Lakehouse. I want, to, I want to introduce you for our like house called One Central Data. The One Central Data leverage Delta Lake format to get all capabilities and benefit of Data Lake and Data Warehouse. 
by using one central data, we can fully support all use cases for analytics, for data science, and even for BI. For the data science persona, we can build the models with the full benefit of Spark and Delta Engine. And for the BI persona, they can still have the reliability and the performance of data warehouse uh, for their workload. In our one central data, we need to maintain the philosophy of data warehouse in standardization, accuracy, and also coherence. So the first component of OCD is the OCD central. OCD Central generates standard tables across Grab that acts as a single source of truth for multiple persona. This is central data set maintained by central team. To support agility and to scale, we cannot always rely on one single central team to produce the data. Therefore, the philosophy of freedom of the data lake is also the key. Hence, the second component in OCD is OCD Federated. By nature, a data team is a data producer. They need to create a business logic, models, or any kind of artifact data to support our business operation and strategies. By empowering the data team with OCD federated, more than 50 data teams can produce their data sets with an automated uh, certification process in place. Think of it like uh, publishing apps on our App Store or Google Store. It is our marketplace of data. Now let's take a look at the component details of OCD. OCD Central allows the central team to build pipeline from raw data in bronze layer. The subsequent transformation, normalization, produce data in silver layer. And even for the federated team and users, they can rewind, augment the data uh, or even can introduce the context-specific structure for dashboarding, or even they can build machine learning datasets in gold layer. We expect to have more than uh, 500 plus tables in gold layer. OCD Federated also has helped uh, to speed up our previous ETL process. In our previous ETL practice, the governed process that we had require a tedious and also long process because it involves many team to team alignments. And although we have a freedom to allowing data team to create tables and write back to the data lake, over time it becomes messy and we end up with the data spaghetti problem with too many lineages and interdependency between the data sets and that are very hard for us to maintain. To address this problem, we come up with a solution called uh, Sandbox. What is the objective of Sandbox? Sandbox is a temporary isolated data containers per team. Back to our analogy of uh, OCD Federated as a marketplace or App Store or Google Store, right? We don't want to publish our apps on the day one. Each team is given a sandbox for them to play around with the data relevant to the scope. Since it is isolated, the sandbox data set will not clutter our production data in OCD. It will stay within each team. We have roughly like 50 plus sandboxes today. The data sets in sandbox do not live forever. We implemented the forcing function called time to live or TTL for the data set to be deleted in the sandbox when it expired. When one is ready to publish their apps to the app store or Google store, like what we have in the previous uh, conversation, then we'll go through the publishing process. Similarly, in our OCD context, when the team is ready to publish data set to OCD, they can go through an automated process to promote the sandbox to OCD. We implemented the process to promote the sandbox data using governance checks to make sure the data is following our OCD standards. These are all automated, and behind the scenes, there are a pipeline and other artifacts created to publish the data set into our data marketplace in OCD Federated. The automated process reduces the time and effort required and leveraging Databrick as a platform. And the most importantly is it addresses the data spaghetti problem while giving freedom to our data communities. 
OCD Federated also can help to speed up the ML ops in our analytics team by helping to prepare the data sets. Once the data flow into our ML ops process, they can write back the data into our OCD Federated, or the result can be exposed to our uh, ML online serving. Let's take a look at a few of our data lake keys use cases. We have merchant thumbnail image recognition to help our merchant partners improve their sales by removing manual effort for the ops team to take millions of food images. And it will improve a significant percentage of checkout conversion for our merchants. And to serve our customer better with personalized treatment through the prediction customer lifetime value and also click stream data. And we also have another example by utilizing the lighthouse to do some demand setting modeling so we can better help our merchant and also driver to have more income opportunities. One central data can address what's lacking in data lakes as a standalone architecture, which is standardization. So OCD support transactions, enforce data quality, and maintains the consistency. And also we have a few data warehouses use cases that can help all the BI needs. We have self-service analytics for our citizen analysts or citizen data science to accelerate their decisions to making the, uh, and they can perform quick action to serve our consumer better. We also have like a country analytics team uh, to help fulfill the specific needs uh, to understand more about the performance of the business so they can tackle the unique challenges in the country. We also have the performance marketing dashboard. This will help the marketing team to track and evaluate the performance of the internal channels so we can serve our consumer better with personalized marketing campaigns. Again, one central data can also address what's lacking in data warehouse, which is the flexibility. The team can use all different kinds of data sources for their data sets to build a BI report. Our lighthouse journey will not stop here. We want to make uh, our one central data become more coherent. And we also want to address all personas in our analytics team and data science team, including the SQL heavy persona by enabling three new integration and also using Databricks SQL as our query engine. Not only that, we will prove, provide also more OCD Python packages to help the team to abstract away the technical problem so the team can focus building the business logic. On the other hand, we also want to support our business users uh, product function using our self-service analytics. So by the time we will continuously improve our de decision making using data. With that, I conclude and happily inform you that Neo is now living happily ever after in Lake House. Thanks everyone for having me today and stay safe.